Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for coming this morning to the Ignite stage. And I will continue for the two last presentation about cultural heritage and, earth, uh, and disaster risk reduction. I will go back to indigenous knowledge, how our ancestors protected themselves against earthquakes. This is very important to, to show that not on, only now, humans are interested in protecting themselves from earthquakes, but before, long time before, people were interested in do that. Before I start, I would say that this project is the, has been done in the framework of Piri Piri U, which stands for Partners Enhancing Resilience to People Exposed to Risk. This project has been just a project of this program when this afternoon we will present the Piri Piri U as a complete with all partners. Then this is the traditional earthquake resistant techniques, the CASBA of Algiers. I will gonna try to present it and to present it why the CASBA is still now existing now and we know that Algiers is really seismic active zone which has been affected by so many destructive earthquakes in the past. But I would say that everything started in 1716, the earthquake which demolished the Casbah of Algiers at that time. Then from that 1716, it was rebuilt, and now people can visit it as a tourist place. How this technique, these traditional techniques, has uh, influenced on the Casbah, on the structure, to resist all these destructive earthquakes? This is very important to show. And this is the Casbah, you can see it here. The way it was built in 1520s to 1580s by the, during the Ottoman ar area, epoch. And this is, you can see, this is Algiers here, just the Casbah. Of course, this is the hills of the Casbah. And now the Casbah looks this way. This is the Casbah with, this, with the narrow street all over the, the Casbah. Before the, the 1716 earthquake, the Casbah was like villa, same thing like in Anatolia in Turkey. But after the earthquake, this villa, this individual uh, villa or buildings collapsed. Then the day, the governor of that time, and we say this is the first building co earthquake building code in the world in 1716, which was applied in Algiers. And then the governor or the day of that time, they asked the people to build houses all together, staying together, so that the, uh, the energy released by earthquake will be distributed all over the urban, urban site. This is what we know we don't have. I will go to, this is, we went back during this project to the French files, to the Arabic manuscripts, and of course to the, back to, 1716 to the Ottoman Domanial Act to see how this building were built, what, what happened, reconstruction of the macro seismic field of the 1716 earthquake. Then in the wake of the 1716 uh, Algiers earthquake, seismic resistant techniques concerning the following aspect were implemented, where today we don't talk, uh, we don't talk about urban scale in our building building uh, codes. We don't talk about architectural and structural. We are more interested in structures, how structure behave during an earthquake, during the strong motion, et cetera, et cetera. But at that time, after 1716, these people, our ancestors, trying to, to, oh, sorry, to think about the urban architectural and structural at the same time combination of all these three make the Casbah existing today. And we can still see it after all these disastrous earthquakes. Then they hit the site of Algiers. Then in urban scale, what is in urban, what they have done after the 1716 earthquake in terms of urban scale? The blocks, what we have today in modern way, modern life, the blocks varying number of houses, are individualized by communication street which surrounded them. This makes each block react independently from the others during the earthquake. All the houses in the same block were connected together. Then 
the seismic energy released by the earthquakes will be distributed to all the blocks that make the, the, the individual building resist better. When we have the houses are semi-detached, overlapping, overlapping on each other and leaning, leaning on each other, helping each other. Or they're forming a compact homogeneous unit. Then the sabbat, what is the sabbat? The sabbat is an Arabic name, which is the street, even the houses, the streets were covered by the sabbat to make these arches like a discharge of, of earthquake loads. The loads will go to the, to the houses in each side of the streets. The sabbats, a number of streets are covered by galleries, and I will show you the galleries or the sabbats, on top of which the house is extended over the streets and those creating roofed passageway. This is good for temperature, for, for, for climatization, for heat, etc. They can be flat with wooden locks incorporated or vaults. We know the role of the vaults in earthquake to discharge earthquake, lateral earthquake loads. Built of stones or bricks. Also, when you have these discharging arches, in urban framework, the number of arches built out of stones or bricks, yeah. allow transfer horizontal loads, the earthquake loads. Construction are not isol isolated elements, but compact dynamic block. This is, this is the, the uh, here you can see this uh, gallery, and here what we call the sabbat. Here we can see it again. I go quickly because I just losing time, and we can see here. This is, still we can see it in, in the Kasbah, and this arch, with this arch arch, which make transfer of earthquake loads to both sides of the street, which make the Kasbah resisting. In the architectural stage, in terms of architecture, how architects were doing that, the typology of houses, most of them have a central patio, a, a square form, we know today in modern earthquake engineering that square form is better for, to resist earthquake loads. Around which the rooms are distributed no more than three levels because this is an earthquake zone. See, today we recommend this small, small house. The shape of the houses is a square form. All of them are square because they resist better because of the symmetry of the repartition, distribution of the earthquake loads to this type of building. And we can see here the arches, and here you will see, no, I'll just go, this is the patio in the middle of the houses, all of the houses are like this, leaning on each other, helping each other, and this, the links of the wall. How we have the links, now we have the links to to take the walls all together during the earthquakes because the building was moving, dynamic. They may be in phase, that's fine. But if they are out of phase, they go like this, then the roof will go down. How these people, they prevented the roof to go down. Here we have the links of the linked one to other by alternate crossing of wood locks. There was no steel at that time. They used the you know, type of wood, it's called a chuia which is uh, in the region of southern of, Alge of Algiers. Considering angles, every 50 centimeters, it's like a code. Every 50 centimeters in height, wood logs are about two meters long. And this type of wood logs, now they can be seen, still can be seen in the Casbah of Algiers. And partition walls, well connected to the main walls by wood logs. These wood logs, they have like four centuries they're not rotten, they're good shape, they are there. This is what I was talking about. You can see here the, the oh, here, the, lo the wood locks, the wood inside. Now we understand by dynamic of structure, by, st by structures, how these wood locks will, will reduce the, uh, the, shear, the shear force and absorb energy. Then now we can understand it, but before, Four centuries ago, I'm sure they couldn't understand it, but they have done it. Maybe by the learning circle of disasters as we know it now. See, we cannot see here, here better the woodlocks, and we can see them here also the same, here and here. 
and also floors built to superposition of two layers of wood logs inserted in all width of bearing walls. These floors, they may be 80 centimeters between two layers, two layers of wood, and between the two layers, you have, you know, like uh, gra uh, gravels and earth and everything to make, to make the diagram infinitely rigid, as we believe it today in modern earthquake engineering. They have the floors that's uh, over 80 centimeters. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, corbelling, oh, sorry. We have corbelling frontal balcony, you will see it, overhanging and supported by wood logs forming an angle of, with bearing wall. This is the, uh, you can see the, the, uh, the floors, and you can see here the wood logs going through the bearing walls at the end. Why to the end? This is they playing the role of link between the two bearing walls. So the, if the building is just going like this during an earthquake, the, the walls are uh, in phase, they go like this, but if not, they are out of phase and they may go like this, and the, 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 the floor will fall down. These wood logs, they, they prevent this thing. This is on corbelling, you can see it here, and we look to, to details. This is the encorbelment, the, the balconies, and look at this place here, here, especially here. Here it's, uh, it's fixed in the wall, but here it's free. It looks like these people during that time, four centuries ago, they knew about the vertical component of earthquakes. That's what not them. If this part here was fixed, it will damage the house. But this part here, as you see it, is just like this. Then you have you have a, a, displace, a possible displacement, then it looks like they knew about this uh, vertical component of earthquake. This is indigenous language, just one minute. The opening are playing a good role. I finished, yeah, no, no, I finished. Sorry. No, look, no, this is very important. Look, look. look. No, look at these people, they like it. 